Mamma Mia. Yes. We have to talk about profit. Yes. When, okay, we, we talked about the shows that were a challenge and emptied the pocketbook a bit. Yeah. When a show turns very profitable, do you have any sense ahead of time that that might be the winner, so to speak, or is it all happenstance? How do you know? Nobody knows anything in the theater. If you, know, if, if you, if you knew in advance, it wouldn't be fun, and, and everyone would do it. Uh, Mamma Mia originally was to hold the, uh, uh, a theater in England until the owner of that theater had a show that he was planning to put in there uh, was ready and he thought it would be a short-term rental. He had to find another theater for his show. Uh, Mamma Mia happened to hit a, a, just the right chord at the right moment and Brian Sewell in my office saw it early, said come over and see it right away David. And I, w I went over and I said to my father, Dad, I'm going to a musical uh, with music by ABBA, do you know who they are? And he said, where have you been the last 20 years? I danced to them every Tuesday and Thursday night. That's right, you took dancing lessons, <laughs> yeah. yeah. My father took dancing lessons. Uh, but, but the truth is, I actually, when I began to think about it, you know, I had been to chess. And chess in England had been a great success and had some of the most powerful and beautiful music written for theater, uh, but had somehow the story had not translated in that moment, in that type of production. Uh, but everybody in audition always sang chess songs. So, you know, you heard them. Um, but I'm there and, and, and I'm, I'm watching the show and uh, it seems vaguely familiar, the music, to me. Uh, little do I know anything about anything. And there's this man in front of me and he's sort of bouncing up and down. So I said at intermission, excuse me, sir, are you British? He said, no, actually, I'm from Malta. I said, do you mind my asking what you do there? I'm a banker. Well, I figured that's my research. I have a bouncing banker from Malta in front of me having a good time, and I was having a good time. I want to do the show. That's how we do research. <laughs> and so, okay. Okay. So, so they invited me back to the green room at intermission and said, would you like to have you know, a, a glass of wine? And, and they introduced me to uh, Bjorn Olveus, who I didn't know that he was the composer because I can't remember anything, and uh, and the uh, the Judy uh, uh, the producer was there, and and and, uh, um, and they were all very nice. They said, "What do you think?" And I said, "I like it very much. I'd like to do it." And that was it. And we worked on getting figuring out how to do it. And I thought, "Let's try for twenty six weeks." And we launched it in a rest Greek restaurant, the press conference in the Danforth. How do you decide 26 weeks? Well, we had that space and no more in the theater. Oh, okay. And we had uh, six weeks of subscription and we needed weeks of preview because it was the first time in North America. And I had to persuade them that Toronto was a better city than San Francisco or Minneapolis. Minneapolis has a large Swedish population and San Francisco had a very receptive audience and uh, uh, you know just as a very warm theater town and so I uh, you know I said we have this base of subscribers and that helped me and and uh, we'd had some other successes I could point to and and so they said okay well, well we worked it out and together we take a certain amount of risk each of us and and we try for 26 weeks at the end of eight weeks instead of the advance going down, it had climbed. It went from 8 million to 11. Nothing ever climbs after opening. It's an unheard of thing to, for an advance. You usually get a very big advance. You hold it and you slowly decline over the years. You, you keep running or you stop. Um, so we said, look, you're committed to go on tour with this company and this cast in 26 weeks. But we think there's enough talent in this city to find another cast and company. So can we build another set and send that to where you're going? And can we rehearse in time that when they walk off this stage, a new cast walks on? And we lost one performance and we just continued for five years. And nobody knew it would be five years. Now is the bouncing banker from Malta, is he an absolute 
sign that that is a show that would do that? It's as good a piece of research as I can do. Okay, so if you went to a show uh, next week in New York, off off Broadway, and there was a bouncing panker from Malta in the seat ahead of you, and I hated the show, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the end of it. <laughs>